I didn't know much about it and I didn't really understand it. So I was really confused at times why they'd put those cones out because I thought everyone was seeing like me. So I was confused why they were doing that and why wouldn't they put different colored cones down. It made me feel really um, disappointed and upset and frustrated. People with normal vision um, actually see through blue, red and green cones. Marcus has no red cones. And what that means kind of in simplistic terms is that he doesn't see the red in anything. And this really is just another disability, another sort of visual impairment. One in 12 men that it impacts would suggest that it, this, is, this is a big issue, you know, especially if you think that that's definitely one per squad of players. And that's just, that's just taking into account those who might be playing football already. What about those who've been put off playing football? I'm sure there's a lot of players out there who are struggling and probably fall away from the game because of being colourblind and having nerves and anxiety around certain situations in football. If people don't care about it, then people who are colourblind and play football will just feel really left out and they'll just feel like they should give up and might start losing footballers rather than gaining them. I would be horrified if there were children or young players out there who really thought football's not for me purely because of the way that we set up our coaching sessions or the colours we use for the cones and the bibs that we use on a regular basis. I think the beauty of this whole campaign is that with one or two subtle changes, we can make the whole experience very, very different. My favourite memory of football was probably um, when I scored a goal uh, from the halfway line. I was running up the pitch and then I played a one-two with my friend and then blasted the ball straight into the top corner. And Marcus's dad was always really, you know, going to have his son to play football. So as soon as he was four years old, um, he took him to the local sports club, Stocksfield, and uh, Marcus started playing football in their sort of kiddie squad then. and. Uh, it's just stemmed from there and he loves football, he plays every weekend. And interestingly, one minute and one session, really interested, very engaged, very energetic. And actually every other session maybe wasn't as involved, a little bit off sheepish, um, staying away from the action really. Marcus's colour blindness was a complete surprise to us. So Marcus was actually playing with some felt tip pens one day and he came into the kitchen and he said, Mummy, is this green or is this green? And it was actually a bright green and an orange pen. So my mum took me to the opticians one day and then we found out that I was colour blind. When he was a little bit sheepish and, a, and, and not getting involved in as much, it was usually because he was on a team that was wearing a particular type of bib, which was, um, yeah, a, a real wow moment for me. Um, but it, it, it was something that was uh, great that we knew that was the reason why he was a bit sheepish and we could potentially do something about it. The colours that I can see best are things like blue and yellow and black and white. They're four really strong colours, but uh, some ones that aren't very good are colours like uh, red and orange, which are hard for me to tell from the grass. Things like uh, blue and yellow and white are all really good for me to see and uh, really um, accurate colours so I can see them perfectly. And what are some of the, what are some of the ones on here that are a bit harder, a bit trickier? Uh, well, especially this one for me, it's, it's not great to see um, because it's quite hard to see against the background. Well, colour blindness affects me in football in many different ways. For example, in watching and in playing. Once um, I was uh, running up to take a penalty and there was a red ball in front of me and I just completely missed it because I couldn't see it at all and I just felt really, really annoyed and really um, embarrassed. Even looking at it now for me, it, it, I have to take an extra second to see who's yellow and who's orange. I think I was always quite sporty as a kid and I'm quite a, an athletic person, so I think I could have gone into a few different avenues and I'm quite fortunate that it was football because it's such a well-known and well-established sport across the world. So it's taken me to Reading, it's taken me to a championship and a premiership club. So I'm quite happy to be involved in football. Yeah, I started off as a winger 
uh, left winger. Um, but then I got moved to a striker when they saw that I was quite big and strong and I could be more effective down the middle. But I think my most memorable game was when I made my debut, uh, scored two goals against Burton Albion. I actually got told I was uh, colour impartial or colour blind at school, in primary school. I think they did a test um, where they saw that browns and reds and certain greens, yellows and oranges, I sort of had a bit of difficulty discriminating between the colours. And so I knew that in the back of my head before I went into football. As I got older, I felt I could speak out, but when I was younger, I just sort of just stay in the background. At first, I sort of tried to hide away or tried to hide that there was a problem. Um, as I progressed through the ranks uh, into the professional game, I had to sort of speak out because if you're in a first team, any sort of problems might lead to you getting pulled out of the team on a Saturday. So just to save my back, I had to say something. And in football, mostly around training and training sessions, the bibs, the kits, it just gets all squeezed together. So you end up having to deal with the problems face to face. Okay, so at the moment these, these colour combinations are pretty good for me, I can see all of them quite distinctly, but if there was ever a time when there was the yellows or the lime greens in, that would cause a lot of problems, so I guess just make sure that the, a couple of colours never clash, basically, that's the, that's the tweak for it. It has caused a lot of problems with me finding passes or even seeing oncoming players who are about to tackle me. I'm not sure if they're my teammates or if they're another player, so sometimes I end up running into my own teammates or even tackling my own teammates. So it might avoid injuries in future if there was a clear difference between the team. I think we do need to do something to help out players in these sort of situations. I played semi-professional until I was 34, 35, and then I went as player coach at the club that I finished playing with. And really that started me off on my own coaching journey. I work across all levels of the game. I'm in the process of implementing the England DNA as it applies to the foundation phase into both the grassroots game and into the professional game. When I was 14, 15, I had lots of trials at professional clubs. Uh, that didn't materialise, so I went into non-league and obviously had to find a job. So my dad said, there's an engineering apprenticeship going at the place where he worked. And as part of the induction, they did a colorblind test. And I can remember the, the doctor's words now. He says, whatever you do, do not do anything involving electrical uh, wiring. Or, and I said, why? He said, your tests on the colorblindness chart are just, you know, it would make it dangerous. And I think it was mainly the red and green wiring as it was then. It, it did cause certain problems and quite embarrassingly in one coaching demonstration, someone sidled up to me very quietly and said, Pete, you, you know you're coaching the wrong team. Well, if, that, if I'm having these problems, what is it like for some of the players if they have the same issue and I, I'm not aware of it? Sometimes uh, a child's inability to distinguish certain colours can present itself as bad behaviour. So you think that they're deliberately running outside the area or they're deliberately running to a different colour cone when you've asked them to run to a particular one. It's not the child's fault. And because young players tend to vote with their emotions first, if they don't feel really comfortable, I think that's going to potentially disengage some of the very children we want to bring into football. We're at the Europa League finals in Lyon to try and raise awareness of colour blindness across football. We're working with UEFA and the English FA on guidance for people in working football from grassroots level right the way up to elite level if you're a player and also the problems that fans can have watching matches. We've staged a match on the mini pitch with children wearing red and green kits because most people are aware that if you're colour blind you have problems mixing up red and green and we've um, then played all the children wearing the same colour kit to show how difficult it is to follow the game, whether you're a player or a spectator. It's hard because I knew them, but the colours were... Well, we're always on the maillots, the colours of maillots. So we didn't know who was with us. Because I thought it was like the verts, the verts, the verts, the verts, the verts, the verts, the verts. Je pensais pas qu'ils voyaient les deux la même couleur. Et euh, mais pour les verts et les rouges, ça devait être plutôt simple. Mais vu qu'on a un daltonien dans notre équipe, et ben on ne savait pas trop si lui repérait ou, et, ou quoi que ce soit. 
Mais à ce qui paraît, ben, il récupérait euh, les couleurs, du coup c'était plutôt bien. Enfin, il, il, on sait qu'il est daltonien, mais euh, on sait qu'il voit les couleurs différemment, mais on, il ne nous parle pas trop de sa maladie. Bah oui, je comprends mieux maintenant, ça m'a sensibilisé et puis bah, ça m'a aidé à, à comprendre ce qu'il pouvait vivre. Et puis que c'était pas facile tous les jours, euh, surtout pour un match de foot, et qu'il bah, pouvait euh, avoir des problèmes ou des choses comme ça. Donc euh, cette journée, enfin cette matinée, je pense que les, les joueurs ont super bien apprécié, ils ont pu voir ce que c'était la difficulté enfin, qui était présente pour les, pour les personnes atteintes d'altonisme. Et je pense que des journées comme ça, il, faudrait, il en faudrait plus souvent. C'est super bien pour, les, pour ces jeunes. In the equal game tent, we've got a, a mixture of colours of football socks that we show to people through special glasses that simulate colour blindness. And it's interesting to see how shocked people are when they look at the socks through the glasses and realise so many colours look the same. Uh, the glasses are really effective at getting the point across. By raising awareness like this, we can get that message across at grassroots level, but we also want to get that message across right the way up to elite level. I think football's always been very good at saying that they don't want to exclude people. The FA leads the way in making things accessible, because if things are made accessible in a big game like football, hopefully other sports will follow. Colour blindness is a really easy issue to address in football um, because there are simple steps you can take. We have to come up with an alternative way of actually distinguishing which counter is which. One of the ways that I've used is putting uh, a passport size photograph on each counter with the player's head shot on it so that they actually know that that's them. There's a real personal connection there with what the coach is trying to explain. It's education really, so for, for me as a coach at the beginning it meant that we could make sure that when we were doing drills that, that the right type of colour balls or colour cones or even just the bibs that they were using was really important. Uh, our aim is to continue to do that. If changes had been made when I was younger I think it would have been a bit smoother ride. There would have been a less anxiety and nervousness in some training sessions which may have helped my performance. Just simple things like putting the cones out that are the right colours and changing the bibs and changing the kits. I think those very simple changes can have a huge impact. It is just awareness. It is kit clashes and it is bib clashes. and These are things that can be changed quite easily. And if that would make the difference between a young boy or a young girl saying, I love football or actually it's not for me, I think that's something we can all engage with and, and really try to promote. If people made these changes, it wouldn't just affect a few people, it would affect one in 12 boys, so that's quite a lot. You know, this is not about just helping sort of a, a very small minority of people, and I think every child deserves that help on every football team. I really hope that by bringing stuff like this to light, it can encourage people who are colour blind to love football as players, coaches, volunteers, and even further. No matter what your issue is, you should be able to feel at home and comfortable playing football. If it was all a level playing field, I think you might find a lot more players getting involved. I would like to say uh, one more thing about colour blindness, which is if you are colour blind, don't be scared to play football and just enjoy yourself and don't worry about it and ask for help. Don't be scared to ask for help.